Good morning everyone and welcome to our Palm Sunday service. Uh, we're going to be using the morning prayer from uh, the Church of Ireland prayer book which we'll find beginning on page 101. Uh, we'll also be using a portion of Psalm 118 and this can be found on page 731. Our Bible reading this morning is from the Gospel of St Matthew in chapter 21 and we read verses 1 to 11. The Lord be with you and also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God our of our salvation, to you be praise and glory for ever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only son was lifted up that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of his cross and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. So let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. We turn to our psalm this morning which is a portion of Psalm 118, and we'll find this on page 731. Page 731. We read Psalm 118 and verses 19 to 24 together. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And a reading of scripture from Matthew chapter 21, the first 11 verses. The triumphal entry of Jesus to Jerusalem. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. 
this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and Jesus sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now in the name of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One verse just there from Matthew 21, verse 9. The crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting. Shout for our heroes has become an overnight success. I think the first time that I saw anything quite like it was on a newscast from Italy. And although it was only a few weeks ago, it seemed at the time a little bit mad. In church circles, there is a little sarcastic saying that goes like this. If anything happens twice, it becomes a tradition. And God help anyone who tries to change a tradition. I have no idea if Anne-Marie Plass is a church goer, but she seems to share something of this sentiment. A headline in the news this week read, Clap for our carers could become a weekly event, says the woman behind the movement. Anne-Marie, who is Dutch, originally spotted the idea on a Dutch news programme, and immediately it struck her that it had positive benefits, both for the carers and indeed for the clappers. And I know I would encourage everyone to mark their diaries for each coming Thursday and do your bit for our carers. Anne-Marie's website has widened out this support to include all who support us through these difficult days. It includes healthcare workers, emergency services, members of the armed forces, delivery drivers, shop workers, teachers, waste collectors, manufacturers, postal workers, cleaners, vets, engineers, and all those out there making an unbelievable difference to our lives in these challenging times. There's something here in this story which I think strongly re resonates with this Sunday in particular. The Sunday when Jesus was hailed as a hero entering Jerusalem. The people made quite a racket when Jesus entered Jerusalem that day. He was certainly made to stand out from the crowd when that crowd hailed him and waved their palm branches in the air. We're told that the whole city was stirred up and people asked, who is this? What may also resonate for us is the connection to the potential in the air for a complete paradigm shift. In other words, it means something which has the potential to overturn things that need to be changed, but which have been enshrined 
unfortunately, as a tradition. Now, let me say there's nothing intrinsically wrong with traditions. In fact, they're in many ways very good things. There was nothing intrinsically wrong with the work of the money changers and indeed those who sold the pigeons for sacrifice in the temple courts. They were symbolic of the traditions that lay at the heart of temple worship. But of course, humanity has a twisted way of promoting self-interest in every area of life. The money changers probably fleeced those changing their common currency for the temple currency with which they were to pay their temple tax and thus support the work of religious establishment. And likewise, those selling the animals for temple sacrifices probably overpriced themselves and certainly were known for slipping in blemished animals in place of the genuine article from time to time. In this situation, Jesus was utterly enraged by the sense of injustice of their trade and their warping of the true integrity of worship. People at this time, you may have noticed, are beginning to ask, what will life be like post-coronavirus? Well, that depends on so many things. The impact it has on individuals and indeed the communities in which we live and even further afield, the impact that it has upon the global village. It would, I think, be a fitting legacy if the support that we are giving to frontline heroes in this war lasted longer than the shutdown. If we valued these workers more wholeheartedly and rewarded their dedication and long hours more generously as a society. It would be a fitting legacy if we all were prepared to give up something of our individualism and to rediscover a renewed sense of community cohesion, a new spirit of contributing to the enhancement of social and spiritual communities to which we are privileged to belong. Indeed, that many more people would find that they are welcome to belong with others in a myriad of different ways. When Jesus entered Jerusalem and was met with a shout for our heroes, welcome, he knew that the events that were unfolding that week were indeed to be of a scale to bring about a real paradigm shift. Holy Week was to transform everything in people's relationship with God. A whole raft of traditions would be superseded. A new covenant was to be signed, sealed and delivered all within seven days. Holy Week this year is going to be very different from any Holy Week we have ever experienced. This time it offers us a unique chance to walk with our hero, as indeed he upholds and walks with our heroes in the community and in the wards of our hospitals. It offers to us a focused time to be with him, to listen to him, and to pray to him. A time like none other. Please use it wisely and keep safe. Together we're going to profess our faith we'll find the Apostles' Creed on page 112. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. And a special prayer for today, Palm Sunday. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O King on a donkey, come and save us from the power that cannot humble itself to, say, to serve us with wisdom, compassion and justice. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna, save us. God in man, come and save us from ourselves from sinful lives turned away from you, your love, guidance and power. Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna save us. Suffering healer, come and save us, from sickness and suffering, heal us by your wounds, bring us to wholeness and health. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna, save us. Obedient Saviour, come and save us from the pride and disobedience that put ourselves and our deeds before all else, destroying our relationships with others. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna, save us. Betrayed friend, come and save us from faithlessness to your way of suffering love and from faithlessness to one another. Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna save us. Silent word, come and save us from hypocrisy 
from religion that speaks of love but lacks the faith to show it. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna, save us. Crucified Messiah, come and save us now. Come and save us from sin and death, that we may rise and live with you. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hosanna, save us. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need, as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick, and to ensure the isolated of your love and our love, for your name's sake. Amen. O gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick, and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work many will be restored to health through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And praying for ourselves as the gathered body of Christ. We are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, O oh God, giving and loving wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you cause. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>